Hi, welcome to SBR.TV. I'm Peter Loshak. This is week nine in college football. We have SBR moderator and stat modeling expert Justin Seven here with us again to discuss some of the big games uh, for the upcoming weekend. And he also told me beforehand that his model has three picks this week uh, that he's very excited to share with us. And I'm excited to see what they are. So, Justin, uh, thanks for being here again. You've got three picks that you're loving right now. Is that true? That's correct. Three play Now, when we talk about picks, if I say this is a pick, that means it is a pick no matter what other information I have up to right now. Most of the time, I just say I have a lean or I have an opinion. If I have a pick, that means in the last uh, 15 years of this model, it's hit almost 60% and 13-3 and three in the last two years. So, of course, past performance is no guarantee of future results. Right, okay, well, we'll get to that at the end and find out what those picks are. But the first question I want to ask concerns uh, all the games with huge spreads that we've been presented with this week. There's a lot of games like that on the upcoming card. Five out of the, out of the 20 games this week involving top 25 teams open with a line of 30 or more. Uh, so when we see lines like that, when we see games like that, how would you suggest we go about looking at them? I mean, should we kind of ignore them because maybe they're too coin flippy? Should we uh, maybe even be worried about point shaving? in those games. What do you think about games like that at this time of the year? Well, I'm not worried about point shaving. Two of my best bets this week are against top 25 teams playing really bad teams. I mean, you see more often than not, I like crummy teams, and there are a lot of bad teams this week. But just like any other game, you have to handicap it. Now, when you have these huge spreads, there's other things you have to look at. Is the team going to hang out, or is it just going to get routed? If it's just an open and shut route case, then the only question is, will the coach, you know, when will he take his, his feet off the pedal. But if the, co if the other team has the ability to show up, especially if they have go a good rushing defense, that seems to make these blowout games less of a blowout. So if you have a team uh, that's arguably outclassed, but they can keep the other side down to five yards of rush, what happens then is in the third and fourth quarter, instead of the team putting up another 28 points, they might only put up uh, 7 or 14, and you know your, your, your crap dog then doesn't stink so bad. All right, well, let's get into the games that, uh, that I want to talk about. Uh, let's start off with the biggest game in betting circles this week. It's you know the one that everyone's been talking about and asking about the most, and that's Iowa at home minus 17.5 over Indiana. Now, Iowa, of course, has uh, probably been the most debated team in all of college football uh, betting-wise recently. Week in and week out, they seem like a good bet against, but they keep covering, and and uh, they've burned a lot of sharp money in recent weeks. You've been betting on them. I've been betting on them. Uh, and again this week, it seems like there are a lot of strong opinions that Iowa is, again, a good bet against. SBR's Iowa expert, uh, Fishhead, likes Indiana here. And he started a great thread on the forum explaining why. Also, the king of the common poster at SBR, Eng Swanin, uh, the populist hero at SBR, he likes Indiana as his strongest NCAA play of the year. And uh, he actually uh, specifically asked to get our opinion opinion on this because he likes to play so much. This is what he posted. He posted, uh, Loshak, make a video asking your girlfriend, Justin Seven, what he thinks about this play. So that, but first of all, Ngog's wanting, first of all, he's not my girlfriend, right? You don't know what the fuck you're talking about, right? We just hang out. He sees other guys. I see other guys. It's not like that. But uh, it is it is Ngog's one's best uh, college play of the year. And uh, a lot of people are agreeing with it. I find myself kind of agreeing with the two. You've given the opinion in previous weeks that Indiana is significantly better than they've been uh, in recent years. They're 5-2 and two ATS uh, this year, and Iowa failed to cover the spread uh, in the two games this year where they were big home faves. They will be here. And now, uh, if, if, in case anyone doesn't already know, Iowa has lost their leading running back uh, for the year um, due to injury. Uh, but then there's another, there are other people saying that it's a trap, which is summed up uh, very well uh, by the post made by SBR poster Bootylicious Bootylicious posted, Indiana sucks donkey balls. Though Iowa does play down to their opponent's level, this game will go like the Virginia game where everyone was on Indiana and they sucked. So what are your thoughts? Do you recommend, uh, what do you think, trying to go against Iowa yet again? I'm not going to surprise you here. Indiana is the right side in this game. Three times, now Iowa's 8-0. In three of those games they won, the other team had more offensive yardage than they did. Now when that happens, that suggests you got lucky. Iowa's luck is eventually going to run out. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to lose this game, although Indiana could win this game, but it means that their spreads are inflated. So, I mean, three times they've allowed the other team more yards, even though they've won the game. Uh, I like Indi another, the other factor talking about the running backs out. They lost Robinson. They lost Hampton. So, I mean, they're two, two of their best backfielders are out. Uh, they're now down to basically, I'm going to say, a third string from the start of the year, which isn't as bad for a, a powerhouse team like Iowa, a big team with depth. But it, it, it accumulates, and uh, the spread's too high on this one. 
I lean. It's not quite a play yet. I might play it, but Indiana's the right side. All right, well, we'll see if the uh, sharp money again fades Iowa. And then I want to get your opinion on, uh, on the two big showdowns this week, which is uh, USC at Oregon and Texas at Oklahoma State. So I guess the first question is, uh, does Oregon deserve to be a home dog here? They're at the three-and-a-half-point uh, home dog to USC. Some people on SBR, including the poster fish head, have given the opinion that USC is overrated. There's also a, a good chance of rain in this one, which would probably serve to help uh, Oregon at least a little bit. Uh, you have anything to say about this one, USC minus three-and-a-half? Yes. I made it USC minus three, so I have no opinion on this game. Okay, and then Texas at Oklahoma State. This is kind of a tricky game. Texas clearly does have some weaknesses that you might not expect from, from a third-ranked team, particularly running the ball. Oklahoma State, though, uh, really hasn't been tested at all this year, and they also haven't quite dominated the uh, the moderate opposition that they have faced. So Texas, Texas as a nine-point road favorite. What do you think of that? That's too much. Uh, I, I think anything above seven, Oklahoma State's the right side. I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to bet it, but I'm certainly leaning strongly on it. Okay, there we go. I have heard that at Bookmaker there's been some sharp action on Oklahoma State. And now, here we go. Well, let's get, let's, we'll, we come to the part where, uh, where we're going to talk about your model's picks. Let's hear it. Let's hear what your big three plays are. Uh, my best plays of the week. New Mexico State plus 44 now versus Ohio State. I was surprised that this line kept creeping up. I think it opened at 41 and just kept going up. Um, but I'm, I'm going to play it soon because I don't expect it to go up much more. Eastern Michigan plus 37 and a half versus Arkansas. And lastly, uh, Tulane plus 36 and a half versus LSU. I mean, what a, the, crazy lines, crazy talk. Wow, really crazy talk. Wow, okay. Well, uh, New Mexico State was a big play that a lot of people uh, liked last week. Um, uh, the sharp action supposedly was on it. They were a 24-point home dog to Fresno State. They got blown out and didn't cover. They also got blown out by, uh, by 38 to Louisiana Tech. Let's see, uh, 26 to UTEP. And uh, so Ohio State is, is definitely going to be the best team by far that they've played all year. That makes me nervous. I don't know. Why do you like this line so much? Uh, if there's a lot of rushing, you know, two running plays take about as much time as three passing plays. So if there's a lot of running, you have fewer drives. So instead of having 12 drives, you might only have 10 drives. When Ohio State's up, you know, 28 nothing or 31 nothing at half, are they going to, you know, they're going to put their second string in, they're going to run the ball out. I mean, I don't expect them to go for the throat, even if they get up that much. So, I mean, if you have a 10-possession game and say, you know, Ohio State scores on seven of them, you know, 49 points, can New Mexico score at all, you know? Now, the, the line suggests no. The line suggests they'll get a field goal, but... Um, I think there's a lot of value playing New Mexico State at a number this high. Right, okay, so I guess the same reasoning goes for uh, Tulane and LSU. I mean, uh, Tulane, last week they were at Southern Miss and got blown out by 37. Let's see, blown out by 51 at BYU at home. They played Houston, blown out by 28. So this is clearly a team uh, that can easily get blown out, but you still think there's good value here. Great value. Look at LSU, though. They are not, uh, they're not really a deep passing team. You know, if they're scoring at will, but they're eating up lots of time, that's okay. So, so give me the, the bad team that's going to lose slowly and surely. That's fine. All right, so that's it for, for Week 9 in college football. I asked around for some info on some sharp action, and uh, I was told that Rutgers at plus 7.5 over UConn was a sharp side. Ohio State, which is probably uh, what drove that line up from its opening of 40. Texas A&M, and uh, perhaps surprisingly, Illinois, which is also probably what has driven that line down to 7. Uh, and again, Oklahoma State is also a side that's gotten sharp action so far. But it's still relatively early, and that's just what the situation is at the moment, but that is what it is. And uh, don't forget, sbrforum.com is where you can go to read all these threads I refer to and more. For sbr.tv, I'm Peter Loshak.